Well hello, welcome back to the RC Pilots Log. My name's Rob. Thanks for joining me today. I'm really excited to show you uh, my newest model. Um, this was bought for me by my wife uh, for an early birthday present. It's my birthday next week um, and I saw this. Uh, a friend, uh, my friend Jason had this up for sale, sent me some photos and I thought that's the perfect thing for my wife to buy me for my birthday. Um, and she agreed, so here it is. This is, um, I believe it's a VQ uh, P40, um, it's uh, a P40 Warhawk Flying Tiger Edition, um, it has a fiberglass fuselage and a built up wing. Um, I believe it's a VQ models, uh, Jason thought it was VQ as well, but looking online and looking at some of the manuals there's some differences um, and I can't quite work out uh, why this is different, maybe this is a very early model, uh, I do know VQ. Um, are now Nexa um, and are now sold by Motion RC. So maybe the manual I've seen is a, is an updated version for that. Um, this has full span ailerons. Um, there's no flaps involved. Uh, it's a fiberglass fuselage with a built up wing. Um, it's got fixed gear um, and a single servo uh, for the ailerons uh, center with um, some torque rods. I'm not a big fan of that um, and I may look at changing that in the future. Um, has a, uh, a nice scale looking cowl, uh, it's a little bit beaten up and cracked uh, but I can probably, that was a good catch, probably repair that quite nicely with some, some fiberglass and we'll look at that as well. Um, the uh, plane came with um, an SC52 four stroke installed um, which I very quickly removed to get it running. Um, Fortunately, I could get it running um, and it, it fired up quite nicely once I had a decent uh, charge on the glow uh, and some fuel to it. Jason uh, had an issue with it when he had the model um, and it looks like it was just a fuel supply issue. The plug had come off in the tank um, and uh, so with some fresh fuel and, and a replumbing of the tank, it should be absolutely fine. Um, as I said, I got it running uh, and it sounds pretty good. I've not tuned it, I'm just going to get it back in the model uh, and uh, and tune it on, on the model uh, when I'm ready to fly, to be honest. Um, I uh, have bought another prop for it. Uh, this has got a 10x6 on it. I think a 12x6 is more suited to it and certainly on the manuals I've found for this kind of series of ASP Magnum SC engines, uh, which are all pretty much the same. A 12x6 seems to be the right size. Um, so this will go back in uh, for the first few flights at least anyway. Um, and Jason also uh, kindly donated this SC80 four stroke, um, which I think would also go really well in this model. And certainly looking at the VQ models manual for this, it says um, up to a 94 stroke uh, or a 62 stroke. So we'll see how it flies. Jason was very happy with the flight performance. So I see no reason why I shouldn't be. Um, and if I am happy with that, this 80 then will probably go into the Fornia um, and I can, it will be a great engine for that and give plenty of power um, on a good size prop. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting that up and running as well. There is a small issue uh, that I need to address on the tail. Um, there's a, a crack in the leading edge of this side of the, of the stabiliser um, and that just needs reinforcing and repairing. So what I'll probably do is cut under, cut into the film on the underside um, and do some repairs uh, and then reseal that over hopefully with the same bit of film because I don't have any of this colour um, and I'm reluctant to buy a whole roll for a small repair. Um, I do need to at some point recover the wings. The wing tips had started to uh, to fray on the ends either hang a rash or it's had a couple of wing overs or, or whatever and um, again I don't have any of this sort of colour covering so that would be a, a full job to recover the wings. Um, it's interesting because I, I probably will do that at some point. I'd like to convert it to uh, to give it flaps and to have dual aileron servos. Um, and also there's facility to install um, re retractable gear. Uh, the wheel wells are in the wing. Um, they're just covered over. These fixed gear are bolted in. Um, so there's lots of things I can do on this. Um, I'm going to resist the urge to cut away loads and start doing loads of stuff because uh, we're only a few weeks from being able to fly here in the UK again. Fingers crossed for the 29th of March we can get back out and get flying. So I don't want to start something else that I'm not going to have ready in time because I want to go flying. I don't want to be building um, when it comes to, to that time. Um, so I'm going to get into a few bits of this. I um, hope you enjoy watching uh, some work and I'll try and talk you through what I'm doing. 
I wonder if it's had a repair previously uh, because of uh, the excess glue around here. Um, it could be that that's from the original build uh, or it could be that that's actually um, uh, a repair previously but the only issue I can see on this on this stabiliser is in fact this cracked leading edge. Um, so my guess is that that is from the original uh, the original builder, uh, whoever assembled this kit, it's just not a very clean job. Um, I'll see if I can clean that up once I've repaired this uh, elevator surface. Not the best join uh, in the world just here, but it will be plenty strong enough, um, especially as it's triangulated through there. Um, it's just the the load, uh, the upward force on it that I'm concerned about there. Um, so uh, that should cover it all off. So once that glue's uh, fully cured, I'll give it a quick sand down um, and try and re-stick the covering film. If not, I'll have to find a, a patch from uh, hopefully some club mates who have a patch in a similar colour. So the glue is nicely dried now. Um, I didn't have any activator for it so it took a bit longer than it normally would. Um, but that's now pretty solid. The flexing is not at the crack. It's um, it's where it meets the fuselage um, and it's the same as the other side. So I'm pleased with that. That's a good repair. Um, and should be plenty strong enough now. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit of sanding uh, just to remove some of the super glue on the wood uh, and key it up a bit and I'm going to try resealing down um, the covering film. Hopefully it will uh, it will stick down again. Um, there's going to be a bit of a gap but like I say hopefully I can get some uh, other covering film um, and, uh, and make it seamless. So I've epoxied uh, the joint on the stabiliser to uh, fuselage um, and that's uh, just curing off nicely now um, and that will just strengthen it up slightly um, and it's a little less, un less unsightly than, the, uh, than whatever glue was on there. Um, moving to the inside uh, here we've got the, the servo tray um, and there's a quite a nice little on off switch here operated by um, a little push, push rod um, with a red ball on the end which is really nice and it's simply just pushing and pulling a mechanical switch there. Um, I'm going to leave that in place. Um, there's also a, uh, a charge cable, a charge plug uh, for the NICAD packs. Um, I'm not going to need that because I'm going to be using a LiPo but I'm just going to leave it in. There's no point messing with it or removing it. Um, it's actually part of, uh, part of the switch there. Um, I'm just going to leave that intact. Uh, I don't need to change any of that. Um, the canopy looks like it's removable. Uh, again, I don't, I don't think I need to remove any of it. There's no pilot in there, um, but I have got a pilot. He's not to scale. Uh, I'm not going to put him in actually because that would look rubbish. But I could get a pilot and stick him in if I wanted. But or maybe I'll 3D print one. Um, but I'm not too concerned with that. Um, I have noticed uh, around the the front of the fuselage here, it's split along the seam. Um, where the, obviously the glue has just worn out. Uh, so I'll mix up some more epoxy um, and get that epoxy together. The last thing we want is an airframe splitting in half. Um, I need to think about where I'm going to mount uh, my electronics next. Right, after a little bit of head scratching and fiddling um, I have decided to mount the receiver here. Um, I ran two zip ties through some holes uh, on the pilot's headrest there. Um, and then sandwich the receiver on some foam uh, and cinch the zip ties down and that's in there nice and tight now um, you won't really see with my hand in there but it's safe and secure and there won't be a lot of vibration because of the foam right so that's uh, all the electronics in uh, other than the battery that needs mounting um, I have wedged uh, the UBEC in up here um, and I now believe wedge is a perfectly acceptable form of securing something um, that's nicely in there, there's foam around it, um, so that's all good. Um, I've just zip tied up and tucked away the second output um, of the UBEC up here, uh, the switchable channel. I don't need that. Um, I could use that in the future if I wanted to maybe put smoke uh, on a system, but uh, with, a, with a Warbird, uh, you don't really want that. It's not, uh, 
Yeah, wouldn't be a good sign. Um, so everything's working. Uh, the elevator uh, is working nicely. Uh, we've also got the rudder and the throttle. So full throttle and then kill switch. So I'm really happy with that. Everything seems to be working. Uh, there's an interesting solution for the push rods here um, with dowels. Uh, I'm assuming the rods are glued as well as uh, secured with whatever's wrapping them there. Uh, it looks like that's some heat shrink and that's some fiberglass cloth. Um, a upgrade for this uh, after the next uh, first few flights will be some uh, Selexile control snakes. Um, the ones that the yellow ones that have a, a threaded insert on either end and they run through a tube because there's plenty of opening here for a tube uh, for a tube style push rod and that's going to just remove a bit of um, a bit of the slot uh, and give me a bit more confidence because I'm not too keen on metal to wood dowels uh, wrapped in fiberglass just seems a bit uh, haphazard to me uh, although I'm sure it's probably a method that's been used for decades um, but uh, as I said before about the, the engine, you know, if it's flown for Jason uh, and he's not had any issues with it and obviously the previous owner before that, um, then it should be fine for me. So the receiver's mounted, UBEX in. Um, next up is to work out how to mount the battery. Uh, so I've left the fiberglass overnight and that's um, cured nicely. I was a little bit concerned because um, the resin, uh, it went yellow as I mixed it and it starts purple and it's supposed to go clear. Um, so I'm not quite sure why that was. Maybe there was too much hardener. It did start to go off in the pot, um, but it's, uh, it's done a really good job on here and this is a lot more solid now. Um, I reinforced the seams. Um, so I've, I first did a loop around here, reinforced the seams after that and then did a second loop. Um, so that's really quite solid now. It gives me something good to screw through into to hold the cowl on. That was an issue before and there was some plastic over the top. So I've, I've removed that and eliminated that. Um, and it's just made the whole thing a lot more rigid. Um, what was happening, I think, is where all these cracks are around here was trying to push the uh, the cowl over the exhaust muffler. Um, so hopefully we've, uh, we've eliminated a bit of, uh, bit of an issue there, but that's now nice and strong benefit is, is it is and it is a benefit it has added some nose weight um, there was two there was a main NICAD pack here um, and also a second one tucked in up here so hopefully we can we can counter some of that um, with the extra weight in the nose um, that should help the CG uh, if it's if I need it um, if not I can there's plenty of room to tuck some weights in here uh, some little stick on lead weights so we'll address that uh, in a little bit I should imagine um, I've also, the fiberglass on the uh, battery mount has cured nicely as well, that's super solid in there now, that's not coming out, um, so that is ready for me to stick uh, some Velcro on um, and mount the battery on, um, and then I think we're ready to kind of get it assembled um, and start uh, looking at the CG um, and tuning the motor a bit. Tight squeeze getting this wing in, kind of almost too tight, but it does go. It kind of flexing the uh, fuselage very slightly to get it in, but I'd prefer that to too loose. Too loose. way to fit this because of the uh, exhaust is to remove the can um, because you can't get into the jam nut for the actual exhaust so if I remove the silencer can cool, that's on my tight then we should be able to put this over yeah look at that. there it goes uh, put the filler tube down here Slide that over. 
Hopefully I've not misshapen it too much. That should work out quite nicely, I think. There we go, so the cowl needs some clean up work, that's for sure. Something that works really well to clean up covering film and plastics and things like that is Zippo lighter fluid. Um, just squirt carefully, squirt it on. Obviously, you don't want to do it around any sort of naked flame or any sort of ignition. Um, but squirt it on and rub it, and it will bring a nice shine and clean off all the crap from the uh, from the covering film. Um, there we go. Needs a bigger spinner, uh, but the war hook is looking pretty damn good. Um, you can see that uh, there is downright thrust on the engine, quite a bit of it, but a little bit of that will be exaggeration from the mounting of the uh, the cowling, uh, but you can see there's plenty there, so that should be good. I've not altered any of the alignment of that, um, so again, if it flew well for Jason, I don't see why it won't fly well for me, um, but I'm pleased with that. It's, it does need a paint job. Um, it could do with the repaint and some recover on the winds, wings, like I've said. And, but that may be something I do in the future after I've flown it a bit, got used to it, um, and I made some tweaks and done things like the retrack. So it could be a nice little project plane to keep going uh, for a few months. Uh, I'll fly it as is for a few months over the summer, and then we'll see how we get on uh, towards the winter. I'm going to fire it up now, I think, um, test the fuel system, uh, having replumbed that, um, and then I'll need to take the prop and the cowl off to um, give it a tune. Uh, but I need to also put in uh, an adjuster rod for the high speed needle there just so I can adjust that um, and obviously a remote glow because I can't actually that's a good point I can't get in to get a glow on there um, so I will need to take the cowl off to do some test runs that's a shame um, unless I can find another way I'll see what I can do Default is now looking really good um, and uh, as you saw from a moment ago uh, the engine is running in situ uh, that means the plumbing's all working um, and my glow solution seems to work although that was a temporary one uh, the idea will work uh, with an extended glow lead just to clip on uh, to the glow plug um, I uh, lost a bit of footage uh, I thought I had moved everything over um, but I hadn't, I ended up deleting some footage of uh, fiberglassing the cowl um, and I ran, uh, I fiberglassed uh, around the inside of the cowl to stiffen that up um, and along all the seams and that's worked really nicely um, and is nice and stiff on there. Uh, all in all, very pleased, um, I think it's looking really good. Uh, I just picked up a bag of bits uh, from a club mate and uh, he kindly donated a small patch of grey uh, covering which is identical um, to that under the horizontal stabiliser um, so I will patch that up I need to take the cowl off again to tune the engine um, but uh, I'm really really pleased with with how that sounds it's nice and quiet and it's got a lovely lovely noise to it um, at high rpm um, really keen for that to go uh, I've also got another spinner uh, again from a club mate uh, that was in the bag 
this uh, plastic's been and melted the second I put the uh, uh, starter on it, and so that's got a nice ring around it that needs to come off. Um, I could possibly do with a larger spinner, uh, maybe a three inch, I think this is a two, um, but I'll put this on uh, anyway, um, and that will be good for uh, the first few flights. I'm really looking forward to flying this actually, uh, I think it's going to be a great little model. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, little walkthrough of, of this model and what I'm doing to it. Um, hopefully next time you see this, um, it will be flying. Thanks so much for watching, happy flying, take care.